First off, there's the cost of this. Yeah. 9.5 billion euro. Let's just have a little listen to what Leo Bradker had to say on News Talk's uh, Pat Kenny show earlier on about that cost estimate. There is uh, an extreme case scenario uh, in the documents where it could cost up to 23 billion. Um, nobody thinks that's going to happen, by the way. 23 billion. Yeah, why, did, look, why did the Thornish that put that out there today? Is it to make 9.5 billion look like a bargain? Well, we're not going to build massive capital infrastructure spending projects uh, without spending uh, a few quid. Yeah, so, there's um, a few quid and then the there's yeah, minimum 9.5 billion. And if you, know, if you put that figure out, arguably, I'm really it, proud before it goes to tender, it could be a lot higher. I'm, I'm really proud and excited that the government is committed to a really large capital project um, in the city, but also in the, in the surrounds. Um, I'm someone who got into politics through, I suppose, commuter activism. Um, I use the train to travel to the Dáil uh, most days of the week. Um, I drove up tonight, I'm, I'm on the show, obviously, uh, yesterday I got the train. I, as Frank was saying, there is a connection through the Phoenix Park Tunnel. There's already actually one there. Uh, the Houston line joins to the uh, Northern line through the Phoenix Park Tunnel, which runs underground Phoenix Park. Uh, and I would often get off of Pier Street Station and walk around in the back gate of, of, of Leinster House. So as somebody, I suppose, who spends a lot of time on the train going to and fro, um, I really, really welcome this. Um, and we've seen the benefits of the Northern Line and, as John said, feeding into North County Dublin, but also, for example, for people coming in from further afield, like my constituency in Kildare, uh, this connection through, through Glasnevin, uh, yeah. through Tarr I'm Street. just so listening to what Frank had to say just about the lack of connectivity to yeah. date yeah. and whether we could focus on other projects like Dart yeah. Underground, like other yeah. projects so, without so, essentially... I mean, there will yeah. be objections so, uh, to a point of, sure. There's also of objections. Um, you know, yeah. ripping up the streets in order to yeah, get but this you know done. What? You've got to do it. I mean... I, Look, you, you can pander forever to objectors or you can actually do things. And no, I, think I am just does wondering about that. One. You say you've got to do it. There's clearly been yeah. no political will to do it to date. Um, I don't think there's been money to do it to date, actually. Um, I think that we have had 10 well, years Well, it was of a recovery. lot cheaper years ago under a Fianna Fáil government I don't know, and it was never I done. I wasn't elected representative then, never mind, part of government. Um, so I can't answer to what happened 20 years ago. Um, but what you, what you do have... During so that we party. connectivity... Um, so there is connectivity in this. I completely agree with Frank, and I would also put the dot on the ground uh, on the map here. Um, I listened to what Frank said about the D Dublin to Belfast mm -hmm. rail line. They're not mutually exclusive. So in, in almost any city in the world, you'll have multiple modes. So, you, you know, you go into JFK, you go into New York in, in the States, um, you'll have heavy rail, you'll have light rail, you'll have trams, crisscrossing against each other. That's normal. So, you know, what okay. we're beginning to imagine here, maybe we're not used to this kind of big-scale spending, but it's a really good thing. It's a really positive thing. Well, um, we're not used to it all to coming it. together. It is literally like Hallelujah. that joke you make about God, waiting for the 46A and then three yeah. arguably come at once. Marie Sherlock, when you... When, um, well, not really when people have been waiting decades for it, James. Well, thank God Fianna Fáil has a government delivering for them now. Well, I think Fianna Gael obviously wants well, to have this. Well, of course, look, it's a much harder... Yeah, of course, I mean, I, I, I'm half joking, but... No, but the government is committed right. too. And in uh, terms of the cost, you know... I want to bring, I know, I want to bring Marie in at, at this moment. point, James. Um, do the costs justify the, the, the ends here and what, what we're likely to see um, if this Metrolink project is built um, beginning 2025? Well, I think it's interesting. Back in 2005, the cost was three billion then. So, you know, to put in context, if we'd actually pushed ahead with the plans. But look, I think, you know, in terms of where we're at now, I, I feel really really strongly that we need to push on with the Metrolink project. For the communities on the north side of Dublin, we see the population growth, 11% population growth in the Fingal area, uh, but also in terms of the congestion and the air quality uh, in, in, in the communities on the north side of Dublin, we need this to be built. Yes, there will be enormous disruption for, for a decade. 2034 is a long time away. Um, you know, I had concerns about Minister Ryan's comments last September when he called Metrolink an option. He, he seems to have, you know, uh, I, I suppose dramatically change that now and we very much welcome that. We would have to question the motivation of the Thornish today putting that figure out. Like ultimately we need to, to hear now from government in terms of the funding that they're willing to be push behind this mm. over the next number of years. Yeah. Because I think you know while we have this announcement today we've yet to really grasp how much money they're willing to put behind it. And for nearly two decades, as you've already highlighted, you know, communities on the north side of Dublin have been waiting for this project. Like, mm. And it's not just a question of this new funding. 250 million or 220 million has already been spent well, that's the point. on Metrolink. That's... So we, we, there's no option. We yeah. have to, to, to proceed. And, and look, when it comes to our record on capital spending, I mean, we're not good at budgeting, are we, John? I mean, look at the, the children's hospital and what's happening there. We're really not good at keeping to a budget. So 9.5 billion, that's allowing apparently for inflationary pressures, but that's before this even goes to tender. So we don't know what way it's actually going to play out. Will they be able to do it without the cost overruns? But I think it's completely unrealistic to project cost 
costings into 2034, for instance, are like there is even mention there in in some of the press today that the, of the timing for train runs in 2060. Now, the worth of money in 2060, uh, it can't be calculated now. Um, I, th I think um, Marie referred to a three billion costing back in 2005. I think it was even later. I think it was 2011. Still, they were at three billion and escalated to ten point uh, to nine point five. Now, I don't think they can cost it. Um, it's a matter of getting the thing politically. The political experience would be to um, get it done. I mean, there've been so many options. There's one yeah. option I always was in a favour of, and I've, I've been working on this as a journalist since the mid '90s. There's a thing called the Dart Spur which could be done very quickly from Clon Griffin um, Station at a, at a very low cost. And that's gone out the window as well. So, so they've decided to throw all their eggs in this basket. Yeah. Yeah. And I just actually want to bring Frank in on that, just on strategy here. When, like, there's all these different plans and different ideas. They haven't come to fruition. Is there a, a core issue with, 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 with planning uh, big infrastructural projects and connectivity in our capital? Absolutely. Uh, and in fact, I was at the, the launch of, uh, of uh, the earlier plans when I was working as a journalist uh, and environment editor of the Irish Times. And really, honestly, you'd, you'd lose faith in politicians uh, uh, and, and, and in the system in general because of its failure to deliver on these, on these projects. Uh, and OK, yes, there was a huge financial crisis following the property crash in 2008. And essentially what Leo Varadkar decided then was that there were three big ticket projects in, for transport in Dublin. One was Dart Underground, the second one was Metro North, as it was then called, and the third one was Lewis Cross City. And because Lewis Cross City happened to be the cheapest at 368 million euro, as opposed to billions for the other two, um, Leo decided to go with Lewis Cross City. and. Uh, and, you know, that's been a success insofar as it goes in transportation terms. But also don't forget that it has littered the main streets of our capital city with 130 poles standing in the streets between St. Stephen's Green and Parnell Square. And actually, just that's to nothing to be proud of. And just to talk about the disruption, and I think Marie mentioned it earlier, that we are likely to see disruption for the next decade. We're also likely to see demolition, opposition yeah. to yeah. all of these yeah. things that could... Uh, certainly delay those plans so, and delay that date. Sure, so I, I remember I wasn't a politics at the time, but I remember when Lewis has been built up Harcourt Street and the traders are out on the streets saying, don't let this uh, monstrosity come on top of us. How many of those traders are now thanking the lucky stars that Lewis goes past their front door? And um, just in terms of the costing, we, we talked about different figures. It's very hard to put uh, a long-term cost on a project of this size and scale this far out. But what I would say is, all the figures say there's a two to one or three to one return in terms of the economic. And by the way, this is not just economic, this is community, this is opportunity, this is a you know, mm. distrib distributed population. There are many, many benefits to having good public transport. But if you do just look at the cost and the economics, two to one to three to one return, economic return for those routes, be that in, in retail, be that in employment opportunities, be it in study opportunities, these things pay oh, themselves right. back a, a time and time again. And that's aside from the community benefits, the educational opportunities, uh, okay. the distributed population, the visiting family, all those kind of positives that come from a good public transport system.